Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are making Regency Head of Air. Welcome, we're going to make some Regency Headwear today. Um, we're starting with a cap. So uh, I'm going to be using uh, black snail patterns, I think it's the 1805 to 1810 dress, and it has a cap pattern in it. So we're going to go ahead and cut this out. It amazes me how similar it looks to 19 or 1830s caps. Like this is basically the same piece, it's just the, the crown is different, which is interesting to me. I am using 100% linen in a, it's not a handkerchief weight, it's a, but it's not really a medium weight either. It's still lightweight, but not very lightweight is what I'm calling it. We're going to make a bonnet next, but we're going to get this cap out of the way first. It really shouldn't take me all but an evening. I think we're going to start by gathering the other piece so that we can fit it to this. All right, let's get started with this cap. So we're going to start by doing a gathering thread, which I've already done, and just gather it straight onto that brim, making it fit. Next step is to do a running stitch all the way up this to attach the brim to the crown. I uh, notice it's set plainly for a little bit. So again, it's a lot like the 1830s caps. But yeah, I'm just going to do a run and fell seam. So we're running it first and we'll come back and fell it in a second. And here we are turning the piece over so we could fell it. I didn't actually film the filming part or the felling part, but here we are getting it ready to fell. And then we're going to turn up the hem. You notice I have a little bit of a string in here. I'm stitching that on first. This is going to be the ties in the back to make sure that the cap fits nicely against the head. And once I get that sewn on, I can uh, fold over these raw edges over it. I got to make sure not to stitch it down because I want it to be able to be gathered so that I can actually fit it in there. But we're just going to you know, pin it and then I get to sew it. And when all that's stitched, I get to uh, start decorating it. So I'm using a pink silk satin ribbon. All right, so I put a little bow on it, um, which I forgot to film. But basically I just stitched every inch or so the ribbon so it didn't like slide around. And did that on both sides. Oops, there's a pin there still there. And then I did a very simple little bow. I was going to do some, like, gathering or something on here, make it fancy, but when I was looking at working class um, images, the ones that showed ribbon, which not all of them showed ribbon, but several of them did, the ones that showed ribbon showed it plainly set with the bow on top. So I was like, okay, we can do that. And the bow looked like it was facing forward instead of facing back, like I would normally choose to do it. But I did it the way the images showed. Anyway, that will be the gap. Let's go ahead and see it start on the bonnet. All right, so we're going to cut out the bonnet. So I'm using pasteboard first, which is basically a bunch of paper, a bunch of pieces of paper like stuck together or glued together. And we're going to cover it with silk. So most original bonnets that I've seen from this time period, in fact, all the ones I've seen from this time period, are silk. So even for the lower classes, they're silk. Most of the time I've seen them in black, um, although I have come across one or two brown ones, and there's one in the Met that is gray, so we're going to do gray, mostly because I'm doing, I'm making this wardrobe entirely out of stash fabrics, and I have some gray silk taffeta in my stash. Technically it's black shot with ivory, but it's close to gray, it looks gray. Nice and smoothed out, somewhat. Also, I am using this pattern, Canix Corner, and I'm using View S because that looks the most similar to the Met Museum um, bonnet. Although it's labeled a cap, it's, it's a bonnet. And I know I said I'm doing View F, and this is actually View C and D that I'm cutting out here. I'm using F for the brim, and I'm going to use C and D for the um, call, is what they call it. I also have some white cotton organdies and I'm going to 
cut out a lining piece because the one interior I have seen, it was lined. And some sort of white cotton, it looks similar to organdy. It's probably not as stiff as organdy, it was probably more of a book muslin. But this is, that's what I have in my stash. So that's what we're gonna go with. Actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this in half. Fold the pattern in half. I'm not, I'm trying not to cut the pattern piece, basically is what I'm doing here. And I think the Met uh, original was lined in a white silk, or not lined, faced in a white silk. I don't have any white silk. This is what I got right now. So we're gonna go with this and it should be fine. So my first step, I'm not even looking at the directions because I don't follow the written directions well. But the first thing I think I should do based on prior bonnet making experience is to sew this frame together. Preferably using a back stitch, although I think I'll be lazy and use a double running stitch. And after stitching that together, I just use a running stitch very quickly. We're turning it inside out best we can, and we're going to put the pasteboard on the inside. So both the outer brim and the inner brim, or the lining, it's going to look exactly the same, so I get to pick which side looks the best for the outside and go with it. But at this moment, I'm just trying to make sure that the uh, seam allowance isn't bulking unnecessarily. So I'm making sure the seam allowance is all on one side so it doesn't flip back and forth and look weird. After doing that, I clip the corners or clip the edges here so that it folds in nicely and I'm folding it in to match and then pinning it. So I'll stitch this down in a little bit. It's just basically to keep the pasteboard from coming out. So our next step is to stitch it down. So I'm just using a basic whip stitch or hem stitch, whatever you want to call it. And I whipped all of that down so it's nice and smooth and straight, making sure I tightened <coughs> the silk so it looks really nice. And now I have the crown part. And I think I'm going to pleat this. So I'm going to pin it there. I went back and forth between pleating and gathering, pleating and gathering. Before I gather the crown, I'm going to put the silk ribbon on the bottom of it, and that's just to draw it all up nicely. Because when you see these bonnets, they're very full, and they're very tightly gathered to the brim, and then they're very, very tightly gathered in the back. And we're going to do that with um, a little bit of silk ribbon. So I have just a little bodkin here with some black silk ribbon that's about a quarter of an inch and I had already stitched a little hem in there you can see my lining and we're just going to stitch all the way over to the center so I'm going to do half and half um, just to make sure it all I, I have space to actually um, tie it on the center and before I move on and put the ribbon in the other half I need to make sure I stitch this down so it doesn't go anywhere Alright, so I have now gathered the brim and gathered it very nice and tight. I turned over the edges two times just to make sure that there weren't any raw edges. And now it's basically like gauging. I am whipping each and every one of those little pleats to the brim of the bonnet. And it's a very weird angle to sew at. Um, and it's not very much fun to have to get every single little pleat. But it looked so much like gauging, I just couldn't help myself, I guess. I guess you could have done every couple of pleats, but it just made more sense to me to do it this way. And it's getting kind of thick to sew on, so I do have my thimble, which I really should be wearing anyway, but I don't always sew. When it's, things get thick and hard, I will wear my thimble. And basically, the last step, I get to cut the um, bottom gathering ribbon in half and gather all this up. So a lot of this is going to be by feel, like I'm gonna, or by fit, really. I'm going to have to try the whole thing on to make sure it fits right, but I can kind of do an approximation right here. You kind of see how it draws that whole brim to give us that nice little shape, and it gives us a nice big back for our hair, but we'll still shade our face. The only thing missing from what I would consider a typical bonnet of the mid-19th century is a curtain, and those don't seem to be around yet, at least not in the working class bonnets.
like this. All right, so Regis the Edler, cat first. It's very, it's quite wrinkled. And I actually don't want my hair in the right place. Let me fix that. This is not going to look great, but it should function. Okay. I dropped that. I'm going to try to get this in the right spot. This is not a period way to do hair, just in case you wondered. This can get my hair in the right spot for just a moment. There we go. But yeah, it is very wrinkled. Isn't that adorable? It's absolutely adorable. It's very white. I know it's hard to see against the white background, but here's our little bow, which I ended up having to redo because in all the pictures from the event, it's crooked and I didn't have time to fix it for the event. So I fixed it like five minutes ago, but it's not crooked anymore. So there's that. On the side, on the back, it's a nice little Regency cap. Anyway, let's do the bonnet. Lovely bonnet. So, inside, outside, pasteboard actually held up really well. It was really humid, so I was a little concerned. And it stays on really well. I mean, it was a little windy, and there were at least once where it did fly off because I was like directly into the wind. But even without the ties, which I was a little concerned with, that's what I was, that's what I was really concerned with, was is it going to stay on without the ties? And it stays on without ties, so we got that going for us. On the side, back. Yeah, I mean, I think it looks really weird. But I'm also not used to this time period. I'm not used to how these clothes fit. I'm not used to how... I mean, it looks right. I've seen images of these, and it looks right. It just looks weird to me. But, again, not my time period. Not what I'm used to seeing myself in. But, yeah, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. I mean, it definitely works as a sunshade. It functions actually very well in that respect. Much better than the mid-century bonnets that I'm used to. Because those don't shade the face. You have to have parasols or veils. Unless your sun bonnets, of course, do shade the face. But fashionable bonnets don't. So... It's just still kind of a working class bonnet, but it still shades the face, which is super helpful. I mean, that's kind of the purpose of a bonnet, is to shade the face. But, yeah. So, I mean, overall, it worked out really well. I had two outfits, I had the cap, I had this thing. I probably do need, do need to make one or two more caps, just so I had an extra. Because I do, especially when it's hot and mucky and I sweat, I like to have multitude because I'll change them out every day like I do my shift or whatever. It's just, it's nice to put on a clean cap, not a filthy one, if that makes sense. So, I'll definitely be making a few more of these. They're super fast to make up. A couple hours, you're done. Um, actually, I don't think it took that long. It probably took me less than an hour to sew this thing. Because really, it's just gathering it, sewing it with back stitch. I um, finished that edge. And then hemmed it around and added a little drawstring and it worked out. I mean, it's perfect. So, super fast project. This, it didn't take me much longer, actually. I mean, it's very simple, too. It's, you know, I think I hemmed it all the way around. Did a little gathering thread. You know, just did my little back stitch across. Just like we did. And then just flipped this on over here and attached it all. Um, it was fairly simple to do. The pattern worked out really well. You know, it, it worked out splendidly. I'm very thrilled with it. So, um, it's just now getting used to my Regency shape um, and the Regency hair and the Regency headwear. It, it all looks very strange to me. So, I need to get used to that. But, I mean, it looks period. It's just not a period that I'm used to seeing myself in. So it's very strange to me. But uh, yeah, that's basically the Regency headwear. Super quick, super simple, not a big deal. And it went together very fast, which is wonderful because I didn't have a lot of time between knowing we were going to this event and being at the event. I had maybe a week and a half, and I was sick for like part of that. So um, I didn't really have the chance to really do a lot of things, which is why I was wearing my 1820s corset and my 1830s shift, because I didn't have time to finish all that. So I just only got my outerwear to look good, and I will work on underwear at a later date, probably next year. 
But overall, I'm quite thrilled with it, and I think it worked out really well. So thank you so much for joining me today as we made our Regency headwear. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell for notifications so you're notified anytime I upload a new video. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.